back to another episode of Load Pay Media. I'm your host, Nick Proughton, and Chief Operations Officer for the Load Project. Joining me once again today is none other than Nick Barashev, CEO of BMG Group. Nick, how are you doing today? Great, and thanks for inviting me. Absolutely. I'm a pleasure to have you as always, and there's a lot to talk about today, so I'm very excited to get the chance. Um, let's dive right into it. Um, <laughs> the world, uh, you know, my I think my global crisis bingo card is filled out uh, already very early on into, into 2022 here, but we've seen a lot of really interesting things, not the least of which uh, was the introduction, or not the introduction, but the, but the execution of the uh, Emergency Measures Act here in Canada that saw uh, protester accounts frozen for just a few day, over a few days. Um, what are your thoughts on, on the, the impacts of this, uh, you know, both politically and, and what does it mean for the individual? Well, first thing, it should should be important to note that um, when when the Emergency Measures Act is uh, declared, it has to there has to be specific criteria that are met in order to declare it, and that criteria wasn't in place, so and it was illegal in the first place. Uh, it was passed by Parliament. But it, when it went to the Senate for ratification, they weren't going to approve it. So Trudeau pulled it and and uh, reversed it. But a lot of the damage was done. Uh, so apart from seizing the truckers' bank accounts and so on, we've had quite a number of um, people come in um, when you know being uncomfortable with leaving their money in the bank. And, and wanting to move, move it into bullion because if they could do this at a whim to the truckers means they can do it at a whim to anybody. So that created a loss of confidence in the banking system. And, and actually the, the bank saw, the banks in Canada saw extensive outflows of uh, deposits. So that, that was the, the, the initial major thing. Um, but then, you know, on, on an ongoing basis, we've got supply chain problems and we're heavily dependent on the truckers and, and that, that's created chaos in, in the Canadian trucking industry. Mm-hmm. So uh, not, not a good thing in terms of the results. I'm sure everyone, well, the, the mainstream media didn't cover it, but when uh, Trudeau attended the, uh, the meetings in Euro, in, in Europe, um, when he got up to speak, most of the members got up and walked out. And he was heavily criticized uh, as uh, a dictatorial tyrant uh, you know, by members of the European Union. So these are the kind of repercussions that, you know, that came out and are still basically happening as a result of that. Mm-hmm. Um, um, it's, hard, it's hard to argue that, that it was a huge overstep uh, on the part of the Canadian government and laying squarely at the feet of Trudeau. Um, what are you seeing as a result of the as a result of this for for the bullion market? Have you noticed that because of the anxieties that people are feeling uh, surrounding this, that that uh, we're seeing now an influx of precious metals purchasing? Well, especially uh, like we have two product lines, mutual funds, which are primarily for registered accounts, like retirement accounts, and we have a bullion bars program where people by uh, bars and coins that they directly own. Uh, now, some people take delivery of those, some people uh, leave them uh, in storage with Brinks and us. So many of the clients that came out as a result of this uh, felt that they were uncomfortable leaving their life savings in the bank that could get vaporized at any moment. And, and, and holding it in bullion is, is safer. Uh, what, what many people didn't realize was that when you, 
uh, deposit money in a bank, it, it isn't held in trust. That, that money is in fact a loan to the bank and they promise to give, you, give it back to you when you ask. Uh, whereas when you buy bullion that's uh, held by Brinks, that's held in trust for you. So it's a completely different legal structure. Yeah, absolutely. I think it's uh, definitely, I know for us being in the business of digital gold and silver, it's definitely, um, it's definitely shed some light on the realities that of how our banking system has worked. Um, mm -hmm. So it's interesting to see that you're seeing similar activity as a result. Uh, now, next on the docket here, um, following almost what felt like immediately after uh, the the Freedom Convoy and the trucker protest in Canada, um, there the war in Ukraine um, came to light, and uh, you know it's been it's been uh pretty incredible to watch what has taken place in terms of the conflict um what are you seeing in terms of of how this how this conflict is impacting um as you already pointed out a, a very heavily burdened supply chain and not to mention the very least of which fuel prices well the, the economic effects are 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 first you have to consider the sanctions that were imposed on russia and of course russia retaliated uh, by um, uh, you know, like cutting off any exports of Russian commodities. And the, and the, the issue now, which is uh, scheduled for this Friday, um, Putin, Putin has already authorized a new law that Russia will only take um, rubles or gold in payment for any uh, commodities like oil and gas and, and other things. Mm -hmm. But part of the, the, the implications are that, that um, uh, Russia is the largest producer of fertilizer and they've cut off fertilizer exports compounded by the fact that the war in Ukraine means that Ukrainian farmers aren't producing anything in the middle of a battlefield. Uh, and in Ukraine was considered the breadbasket of Europe for production. So with the, the, the uh, limitation on fertilizer, there's going to be severe food shortages around the world by the end of summer. Uh, the production will be, so the food prices, which are already going up dramatically, uh, are, are going to be even more dramatic as time goes on. And when we compound that with the rising price of oil, and, and as far as I'm concerned, the, the rising price of oil isn't due to the war in Ukraine. The rising price of oil is due to the fact that on his first day in office, Biden essentially destroyed the, the U.S. energy uh, Structure. They, they, they were exporting oil before that, and he stopped uh, the leases, stopped the pipeline, and so on. So the price of oil went up because of that, ahead of the Ukraine conflict. And when the Ukraine conflict came on, now it's gone even higher. But as the price of oil raises, then ev everything else will rise because. Everything's connected to oil transportation. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and, and so on. So, yeah. So, the conflict in, in Ukraine, as devastating as it is to the people of Ukraine, has got huge economic implications worldwide. Mm -hmm. No, it, it, it certainly does. And I know that uh, in, for those of us, uh, even here in Canada, we're, we're feeling the impacts of that, that burden on the supply chain and um, uh, the realities that are, that are now facing us as a result of um, the fuel shortages. I believe uh, even locally here, we're seeing prices over $2.08, which is phenomenally high. Um, so, so, you know, I, th I think many have come to the conclusion or the agreement that we are, we're either entering or in the middle of a, a recession um, and the inflation uh, has, has blown past um, 
you know, all projections uh, that, that many experts have said that they would stick within. Um, right. Um, so, so given this reality, I mean, what is, what is your, what is your take here? What should people be doing to protect themselves? Oh, we, How long do you think this will last? I'd be curious to get your thoughts. Well, to uh, take into account another factor. So, uh, the, the U S in, has enjoyed a uh, reserve currency status for, I guess the last, uh, nearly 70 years, um, and, and that may be changing. So first of all, um, Russia is not taking US dollars in exchange for its goods. And, and for the first time ever, Saudi Arabia is negotiating with China to sell Saudi oil in, in yuan. So if that happens, because the, that's the thing that's maintain the US dollar as the reserve currency. If that you know, progresses and takes place and other OHIP members uh, uh, follow, uh, then that, that will mean the end of the, the US dollar as the world's reserve currency. And, and at that point, that's, that's when the price of gold will take off, inflation will take off, particularly for the Americans, uh, and, and the US dollar will collapse. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I've definitely heard uh, for a while, and I know China has been working hard at, uh, to push itself as a new global reserve currency. I mean, nobody's got a crystal ball, but I would definitely say the odds are not stacked in the United States' favor at the moment. Um, now, um, what, how is this situation playing out in the financial markets? I mean, we've talked about the, you know, the, the real world impact of what it means for you and me, the individual, uh, you know, living, uh, living in this, in this climate, but, but what are you seeing in the financial markets, like the stock market as all of these conflicts are taking place? Well, and, and we've looked at it for a while and, and we think that the stock markets are in a, um, uh, a, a major bubble that's unprecedented in history. And it's grossly overvalued by every metric that you can apply to it. So, so the, but the issue is, is if the US dollar um, loses its reserve status, well, for sure the, the US stock market will collapse. But the, the collapse this time could be worse than 1929. I mean, uh, people have been um, speculating that it certainly would be worse than um, at the very least the 2008 financial crisis, but to say worse, that it would be worse than uh, 1929 is, is, quite the, uh, um, is quite the claim. Uh, what, um, what key indicators should people be looking for uh, that would signify that it's perhaps time to, to migrate their wealth outside of this? bubble because there's been many situations throughout history where people say oh it's a bubble it's going to burst it's going to burst cryptocurrency even is a great example of this um the housing market in canada is another um so what what signals should people be taking well this is the the the, the one area is is people say well you know the market hasn't tanked gold hasn't gone up so everything's fine well gold has gone up if you if you look at the uh, the increase in the price of gold since 2000, the average in all currencies has been over 10% a year. Mm -hmm. So the issue is you don't have to wait for the market to collapse. You better get some gold now. And while you're holding it, you're probably outperforming everything else. Like pension funds, as an example, they target for a 6% portfolio return, mm -hmm. and in many cases don't get it, but gold has done 10%, yet none of the pension funds have any gold. I mean, that seems astronomical. So, so the time is now to start shifting the portfolio from financial assets to hard assets. But as a, a, to me, a starting point today, you should have at least 20% in gold and then build on it from there. The, 
the thing that people miss in, in terms of opportunity is because I'm older and remember things from the 70s, when the markets um, get dicey, you don't stay invested. You take your money off the table and sit it out. Because then if, if you do that, you'll, you'll be able to participate in the greatest opportunity. Because if you sit in, in gold or even cash and the markets tank 50 to 70%, well, then you take your cash and buy back in at minus 70%, okay? You don't stay invested and take the, the 50 to 70% hit because then you're gonna need 100 to 140% gain just to break even. Mm -hmm. and, and if you sit in it, the length of time to break even probably won't live long enough. Right. Like 1929 took 27 years to break even. The 2000 high tech crash has taken 15 years to break even. The Nikkei, which tanked in 1989, still hasn't broken even. Absolutely. You're staying invested you probably won't live long enough to break even. Sound advice. Uh, know when to uh, to get out, right? Know when to hold them, know when to fold them, as the song goes. Uh, um, you, you at least get out gradually. It, it's not like nobody's that sharp to pick the day, you know? So, so what you do is you start uh, transitioning your portfolio from financial assets to hard assets. Absolutely. And I mean, that's a huge core uh, piece of what, what load is all about is, is the strong belief in hard assets as, as a way to preserve your wealth for tomorrow. Now, this is a question that gets asked a lot, um, but, but I think it, the, the question finds a new weight in these times of crisis here. What do you say to those people that are, that are saying that uh, they would rather or buy Bitcoin or buy Bitcoin rather than gold or silver, or that Bitcoin is digital gold, so to speak? What are your thoughts when people come to you and ask that kind of question? Well, all, all the governments around the world are in the process of developing their own cryptocurrencies. When, when they do, uh, they'll probably make it very unattractive or banned the private currencies. But when they do, um, if they, they convert to a, a government-run cryptocurrency, then we're all really screwed because then they, they can cut you off from your money supply kind of at a whim. Mm -hmm. So that's a very dangerous uh, area. Um, so Bitcoin is, is uh, um, te temporarily um, seeing, seeing a, a, a surge, but uh, long-term, if, if you look at the history of digital money, it, eventually there, there's been many, many even before the, the uh, Bitcoins of the world. And in, in all cases, they, they started getting used by drug dealers, pornographers, and money launderers, and then they got raided and shut down. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Uh, I think there's certainly uh, I think there's certainly uh, a case to be made that the United States its dollar has probably been used by a lot of those archetypes that you pointed out as well. Um, but never, but nevertheless, I, I appreciate your thoughts on on the matter, and it really is interesting um, because there is a whole demographic of people that that seem to uh, totally believe that that Bitcoin is the way of the future. I'm not one of those people. I'm a believer in in, in silver and gold. Um, have been for the, a while. The main, the main thing you've got to consider is that there's a lot of discussion about the risks of a cyber attack or an EMP attack or whatever. Mm -hmm. And your financial assets and Bitcoin then just vaporize. Yeah, I mean the 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 risk of uh, of a coordinated attack like that would be would be uh, so devastating. I think that we would all have. Uh, Bigger, yeah, bigger we, we would all have big problems, but <laughs> I would certainly if you had your net worth in in uh, financial assets or Bitcoin, then you'd be we're worse off than you know. Right, a lot of people are talking about that the 
place to be now is to go from financial assets to hard assets. So precious metals, land, food, oil, those type of things. Absolutely. Well, Nick, I really appreciate your time here today. That's all the questions I have. But as always, I like to put this out to our viewers and to our, uh, and to our guests that we have on our show here. Is there any uh, parting words that you'd like to leave for, for our viewers and for our, our community members? Well, just uh, if, if they want more information, we've got two websites. One is uh, BMG Group, which is our main website. And we've got a second website, which is BMG DIY investor, which is for do-it-yourself investors. There's a lot of uh, in, information there that will help them in terms of their investment. So those two sites uh, would be good. I also do a weekly newsletter, the, the Bullion Buzz, so they can subscribe to that for free. Uh, and, and of course, I've got my, my uh, book that I wrote quite a number of years ago, $10,000 Gold. And we have both hard copies of the book as well as audio CDs. Fantastic. And where can people pick up those CDs on the BMG Group website or Amazon? Yeah, they can contact. And I think I think they're still available on Amazon as far as I recall. Yeah. Fantastic. Well, once again, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, Nick Bereshev, everybody, CEO of BMG Group. Uh, as always, if you enjoyed today's interview, please take the time to like, follow, share, uh, follow us on your favorite social media channels, and of course, head over to Load.one to learn about how Load is taking digital gold and digital silver into the 21st century. Thank you guys so much. And thank you. Thank you.